British Parliament has actually voted down Prime Minister Theresa's May Brexit deal. We're joined by Roxana Saberi from London now. Roxana, what can you tell us about this vote? Well, Rena, lawmakers just rejected Theresa May's plan, despite her last-minute pleas and their attempts today to amend the deal. She lost by a huge margin of victory, 432, sorry, a margin of defeat, 432 votes against her plan and 202 for her plan. Uh, I mean, everything we heard was predictions would be that the margin of defeat would be like maybe 100, maybe up to 150, and 150 votes margin of defeat would be the largest in more than a century. She's lost by even more than that. This was a plan that the prime minister had reached with EU leaders on Britain's divorce from the bloc last November. But lawmakers on all sides have argued the deal is fundamentally flawed, keeping the UK tied to the EU rules on things like trade, but without a say in the bloc. They also disagreed on what should happen but at the border between Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, would leave the EU, and the Republic of Ireland, which would not. Rena? I'm curious, Roxana, what happens next? Is it over for Prime Minister May at this point? Not yet, but there will be a no-confidence vote tomorrow in Parliament. If she survives it, she will work over the weekend to get a bill Parliament can try to get behind by trying to get more concessions from the EU, and she has until Monday to present that revised plan to Parliament. MPs could alternatively push for a second referendum, which could overturn the 2016 vote to leave the EU, or if some MPs from May's own party have their way, the UK might leave the EU with no agreement at all. But but critics Rena, say crashing out of the EU with no deal could lead to chaos and delays at the borders and shortages of food and medicine, but the government says it's taking measures to prepare for the worst-case scenarios. With no clear majority in Parliament for any other plan right now, though, there is a chance the UK will ask the EU to delay Brexit beyond the March 29th deadline so politicians can put together a new plan. Mm. It is all very messy, Rena. Uh, it certainly is, and a significant vote at that. What's the mood of the people in the United United Kingdom. This has been a really drawn out political process. Do you think that there could potentially be another Brexit vote? Well, it's not clear yet. There has been some talk about that. And with such a large margin of defeat, who knows, perhaps that likelihood is even greater. But this whole process for many people that I've been talking to has been draining, dull, and demoralizing. A lot of them don't want to think or talk about Brexit anymore. It's also a very divisive subject. Many people are tired of what they see as political paralysis and have tuned out the details. There's a lot of uncertainty for people and businesses, especially those that have strong ties to the rest of the EU. You. And tonight's vote, I think, just continues that uncertainty. Rena? You mentioned those businesses, Roxana. Do we have any sense of how American businesses are affected by this in the United Kingdom? Well, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce has said that the stakes are high for American companies that have invested in the U.K. as a way of accessing the EU market. Some have opened subsidiaries elsewhere in Europe to make sure they can keep doing business as usual after Brexit. The Chamber says the U.S. and U.K. are each other's single biggest investors, and British companies employ more than a million Americans in the U.S. The worst-case scenario for them, the Chamber says, would be the U.K. dropping out of the EU with no agreement, because that could lead to even more uncertainty certainty for businesses. Rina. Our Roxana Saberi coming to us from London with this breaking news. Thank you very much, Roxana, for joining us.